general question comes in, can you show us or give us new ways to try and stop all of these all of these effective runs that we're seeing right now in Madden 17? So what this tip now is going to represent, we're going to show you a couple things. We're going to show you uh, a new concept we're calling the 4-4 pass commit run defense. And then our other defense is called the aggro cover zero uh, run defense. So let's first talk about the 4-4 pass commit defense. I would recommend coming out 4-4 split and come out in the cover three. Then from here, uh, the move to set this up is to pinch your linebackers, spread your defensive line, and crash it out. Now, here's the problem that we face a lot of times. Someone runs a counter, we'll go in instant replay and show you what it looks like. If someone runs a counter, you will find that when they run the counter, look at your defenders. They all, like in unison on a very consistent basis, go in the opposite direction as they, that's like by design from like counters is that that's the whole point of the counter. You get the defense going one way and you go the other. Well, it happens on a very consistent basis and that's what makes these counters so effective this year. So. Step one in this 4-4 pass D is like, how do we take this away and how do we not let the offense have the advantage when they run counters? So you have a way to get around this and mitigate those problems for your defense. So what you want to do is hold pass commit, left trigger, and then up on the right stick. That then makes your defense say, play the pass. Don't worry about the run, but play the pass. And what you're going to find happens uh, is your defenders don't get faked out uh, by the the halfback counter. So take a look. Remember the linebackers before they got faked out and they all went the opposite direction. Notice how they're all flaring here and they flare out and they're dropping into their zone assignments. Well, what ends up happening is if I was able to get to the edge there, uh, I look at the defender. There's a defender out there, Michael Kendricks, that's just waiting for Jamal Charles to come in and lay a big hit on him. There's no one else that, out, out there that could block him. So what we figured out was if we call pass commit, uh, then we're able to mitigate that problem that we're having um, with having to worry about our defenders going the wrong direction with counters. There it is again. Watch, I get out wide, like I can't even get wide from the containment because of the line crash. But uh, you can see that it's very successful um, in preventing your opponent from faking your defenders out with the counter. Now the other thing that I think is effective about this defense is we have four linebackers and they're all at, at the same depth, but they're all f far away from the line of scrimmage. Like they're not like up in the belly of the beast. They're not like all up here. They're not, they're not up here. They're not right here. And they're not like right here. So what this really truly means um, is that it's really hard for the offensive line now to find these guys in the open field and get their ugly paws on them to lay a block. So what ends up happening is the offense has to work harder to now get up field and make a play on these guys. Like, for example, let's take a look at 61 right there, Morse. He's a great pass blocker, um, not known for all of his run blocking, but known for his pass blocking. But take a look at the center. He has, he's has he got no one to block because they're all so far away. So he's out there seeking them. He's like, he's like, come on, where are you? Let me block you. So look, at he's like first going to, to 50, right? Looks like he's going to go to 50. Then, uh-oh, he peels off to Mike Jenkins, goes to Jenkins, and then look at there's two linebackers that are free to take down the ball carrier. So that's what we mean by if you keep your defenders far enough back, it makes the offense have a really hard time to identify them and then block them. Where if I were to keep my guys really close, let's like let's like go. Oop, I don't want to do that. Let me let me go like this. Let's just leave it like where they are here, right? If I were to leave my defenders here, not pass them or anything. Like, it's easier for the your opponent to get their ugly paws on them. And right there, you see I was able to get to the edge, set the edge, and no problem. The edge was sealed. Um, so, instant replay-wise, look at the defenders without the pass commit. They all break the wrong way. And then, you're able to get off the side of the edge and go. Now, that guy on the outside made a good play. But, you can see the success you have. So, uh, we're calling this the 4-4 pass commit. It's not... It's not the end-all, be-all defense, but what I believe is that it's going to put your your defense over the long haul. Over the over the long haul of playing this game, I feel as though you're going to put yourself in a better situation to stop the run and and more specifically stop the the big run, like stop the run that like it's going to prevent the you know 80-yard touchdown run that happens so often uh, in this year's game. Like so, out here, like notice how the outside linebacker. 
because of the pass commit, he, he got really aggressive there. Uh, he recognized that it was a run, uh, and then he went and attacked the ball carrier. So here's again, pass commit. Here's the defense, power G. They drift, they drift, they drift, and then right there, you can see uh, the, the offensive line has a tough time to identify the guys in space. They're not able to get their paws or ugly paws on anybody. And then, as you can see, like look at 84, isn't he doesn't have he's not blocking anybody until six yards upfield. So now it's they're not really doing anything. My guys are just kind of free. And notice how no one ever even gets their hands on our outside corner. He comes in, he makes a play on the ball. And we have two defenders that are getting wide, scraping wide, setting the edge. Now, opposed to if we had something that looked like this, right, on defense. If we just kind of kept our defense the way it is, let's say a little pinch of the line here. Power G. Notice the difference. Now, yes, the ball carrier got taken down in the backfield. But what I want to call your attention to is notice the difference how quickly the offense gets their, their ugly paws on the, the defense. Remember 50, 53 before, he, no, one, no one touched him. He was scraping to get wide. Well, now guess what? The offense has the advantage because they're blocking him. Travis Kelsey's getting downfield. He's blocking the inside linebacker. Well, everyone at this point is blocked. If 76 did a better job of kicking out here and just blowing up the outside corner, you're in tremendous, you're in a tremendous problem, right? So let's take a look at this again. Let's pinch the line. Let's go out here. Everyone gets their ugly paws on people. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. See how he got his ugly paws on him? And that's what happens, and then you get upfield, and then it's a bad situation. So, we can mitigate some of that, some of those risks, by running the 4-4 pass commit, where we spread our defensive line, crash it out, pass commit, uh, and then go from there. And you're gonna see the offense has a harder time getting their ugly paws on people. And right there, as you can see, he breaks a tackle, that's fine. But we still had a defender in the area. I would recommend putting a really good tackle player on that outside. Now, the next step I want to show you, uh, I want to go and talk about what it means to be the aggro cover zero style defense in Madden 17. So, you just saw the 4-4, and that 4-4 is a very, um, it's, a, it's a safer way to play, and that's one way to play run defense. But I'm also now recognizing there's another way you can play, and it's a very aggressive nature. It's from the 4-3, uh, it's really any, it's any cover zero play. So by default, you take a look at a play like Thunder Smoke. What cover zero literally means, notice how there's no zones on the field. Cover zero means there's no deep defender protecting the deep part of the field. That's, that's what cover zero means. It also signifies, hey, my opponent is blitzing, right? So let's take this 4-3 normal uh, Thunder Smoke and let's talk about what it means to be aggressive. So first and foremost, I love that when you pinch your linebackers from this set, look where they go. They get to a very unique spot in the field. They get really tight and they get really close to the line of scrimmage. Now, when you're the aggressor, this is a good thing. When you're not the aggressor and you're dropping back into soft zones, it's not good to be near the line of scrimmage because the offense dictates the pace and the flow of the play. So now we have our linebackers really close to the line of scrimmage. Well, what would happen now if we kind of overload the defense in the middle of the field here? So let's say the offense here runs the counter. Uh-oh. Now look what happens when you become the aggressor we don't sit back on our heels we play a very aggressive style defense i understand that you could get beat off of this but i want to give you something that not only you have the 4-4 that allows you to sit back and play a little more soft coverage that's one option but how about those times where it's third and one you know they're going to run a counter well here's a great setup a great play where you don't even have to do anything the the defender just came in and took the ball carrier down in the backfield so there it is right there, there's the counter. So let me show you that again. This is a pinch your, your linebackers, pinch your uh, defensive line, and then snap of the ball, just go. You can see the linebacker gets in the backfield and he makes a play on the ball carrier. Ball carrier. So great great question there from Shamo Kino. He says, well, just run a sweep and it's six. Totally, totally. That's the name of the game. There's no perfect end-all be-all defense I think that that 4-4 gets in a little bit more of the territory where it gives you a little bit more success to have it as like an every down defense but what I want to show you here and I, what I want to get hit home about this aggressive style defense is I think you guys can have success understanding be the aggressor when it comes to trying to stop the run in this year's game so how might we want to try and stop the power G stuff well my recommendation would be to pinch linebackers here and then spread the line and do the same thing we did from 4-4, crash your line out. That's what I would recommend. 
Now, if they do run Power G, you get out there, you scrape, you scrape, you scrape. And, and look at the difference between being the aggressor versus playing the 4-4 soft coverage where you kind of dr guys drift in the space. Take a look at the point of attack and where the offense becomes the... the we dictate to the offense how we're going to play. Look at this. 84 gets no push. Look at 87. He gets no push up field. 42, the fullback that was kicking out and blocking dudes all the way up in this area by the 30. He now gets eaten up in the backfield. 76 gets eaten up in the backfield, and now everything's muddy. We're over there with our user defender. We take the ball carrier down for about a three to four yard loss. Let's show you that again. Here it is. Pinch the, the linebackers, spread the line, crash it out. Get your user defender over there. They run the power G, snap of the ball, get over there, make a play, and look how muddy it is. I'm now just giving you an option here that it's okay to be the aggressor uh, with what you're trying to do. Are you gonna get beat over the top with some passing plays or some drags? Yeah, you better believe you are. But if you know that the run is coming, I think this is a really good option to go to. It's clogs running lanes. You're putting defenders in every single gap because you're being the aggressor. Uh, and you're pushing the offense back rather than the offense pushing you back. So that's what I want to hit home here, the importance of this. Now, the other thing to note, uh, notice how in the cover zero, your outside corner here is in a, um, he's in a force role. That's really important to the success of this play. When you're in a cover three, notice how this defender is not in a force role and you, it's putting the pressure on this inside safety. Like That means this inside safety has to get wide. So unless you manually slid him out here like this, it's gonna be really hard for him to get out wide and set the edge. But in cover zero plays, the outside corner on that side is now in a force defender role. So that then gives you the advantage there to have some success. Now let's show you a little bit of a power O here. Power O, again, entire defense is completely muddy. Uh, and it gives you a great shot to be able to defend a lot of what your opponent is doing. Uh, I want to show you this uh, run style run defense as well against another another front that's also really popular that people like to run. So let me just go here, Thunder Smoke again, and we're gonna go single back jumbo pair and call the, the call the counter. So here's Thunder Smoke. Uh, so here it is. Pinch our linebackers against this front. Your opponent goes and runs the counter. Defender gets in there, and we get completely muddy, and we take the counter down in the backfield. So let's take a look at now halfback dive. Halfback dive. And then your opponent runs the dive. And notice how we get defenders. They shot through the gap, but they actually didn't take them down. They missed. But the important thing is they actually got free. We're shooting free defenders in after the, the ball carry on a halfback dive, which is clutch. Like the inside linebacker, he's completely unblocked. Um, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen very many plays in this year's game where like you actually can old school shoot the gap like this. Like, it, it, like the halfback, the halfback dive from this set is really good because you can cut it to the left here and get out wide. You no longer can because that DN is going to contain there. This inside linebacker, he's going to shoot through that middle gap. And then on the outside edge, uh, you have your free defender. You have your free user defender that you could shoot through between 87 and 84 and have success. So let's, the last one we have to take a look here is the stretch from this formation. Let's take a look. 4-3. We'll go to Thunder Smoke. And we'll go to Stretch. So let's take a look. What this looks like against Stretch. Snap of the ball. Get out wide. Get out wide. And as you can see... We're also able to still lock up stretch from this play as well. So here it is again. Stretch, get out wide, get out wide, get out wide. And look at that, look at that gap. I made a terrible user play there, but that's 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 exactly what we want. This is exactly the type of hole we want to be able to make a one-on-one -on -one play, because then it's on us to make a play, and we love that. Like, look at that gaping like uh, running lane right there. You want that, because then it's one-on-one. -on -one. Let me make a play in the open field, Unfortunately, I got beat there, but ra I, I'd rather that than just getting always blocked by everybody. Like that's, I would much rather that happen than just always getting blocked by everybody. So let's show it again. Here it is, open field. I get juked again. Don't forget, I'm I'm controlling two controllers here. Don't forget that. Um, we're gonna get one there before we go though. Stretch. There it is. That's the one we wanted, and you can see we take down the ball carrier. So. Uh, you can see, be the aggressor is my rule. 
That's the run defensive tutorial. 